Okay, 27, 28, um, hello. I am just gonna give a couple of really short thoughts on these chapters. Um, but really here we see a theme expanding but in this family, this chosen family of God, Abraham, Isaac, and now Jacob, who has found himself the receiver of a birthright that is not actually his. And we read in this chapter exactly how he goes about grabbing hold of what it is that he wants. Um, but there's a theme that we can see in this faith wrestle that sometimes if we're not fully able to surrender to God and trust him, we go about grabbing hold of his will in our own strength. And it's not that Jacob wants something that is bad. He wants something that's good. He wants blessing. He wants to be in the center of God's will and his father's um, inheritance. It's not bad what he wants. He's not scheming for his own, only for his own kind of self advancement, but he's scheming. There's a, a control. And I think rather than going into all the different verses today, I suppose I'm led to think about how we grasp hold of things and how we wish to um, grab things in our own strength instead of letting God bring them to us. God has already promised that Jacob is going to be one that inherits, he said, to um, his mother. He said to Rebecca, there are two nations within you and the, the older will serve the younger. It was already a done deal. But Jacob is still trying to grab hold of it for himself. He's still trying to pursue um, that in his own strength. And so there's a kind of a scheming that happens. And in a way, all four of the members of this family um, are struggling to trust. They're struggling to just surrender and trust. Isaac is doing things that will advance Esau. Rebecca is doing things that will advance Jacob. None of them really win in the scenario. Everybody, um, nobody comes out feeling fulfilled or satisfied because they've all tried to play their hand in the plan of God. And I think it's just a reminder to me that if God said something, he will do it. He will do it. And we can engage with it and we can... Um, partner with him in believing for it but we don't have to take matters into our own hands and scheme about it you know we know that Isaac is really proud of Esau he's proud of his like manly pursuits and his hunting and he he chooses Esau even though God has chosen Jacob and told them about it Isaac still wants Esau to be advanced and we've got to make sure that we don't let our preferences uh, outweigh what God has said God said Jacob Isaac is still rooting for Esau. Rebecca has chosen Jacob, but she also does it in a sort of underhanded way. There's trickery, there's deceit, and, you know, God already has got it. And I think sometimes we, we forget that. We don't have to get involved in that kind of way. They, they kind of removed God from the blessing in some of the way that they went about it. And God's the only one who can bless us. So... We can't bless ourselves and we can't grab God's blessing with our own hands. He has to do it. But as the story plays out, this kind of pattern of scheming, sadly, um, it, there's a pride within it. There's a, a root of um, selfishness in some of the way that they do it. And so it's amazing that God continues to bless them. God does continue to bless them. But I think we see some of the humanity in the promise here, as we see them uh, struggle to surrender to God's plan. But despite all of that, despite all of that, God is so good to them. And he knows that our human nature sometimes is perhaps to control, perhaps to, um, to have selfish motivations. And yet he still blesses. And at the beginning of 28, it says that he repeats the blessing to Jacob now. You might be sick of me saying this. But, um, you know, there's a repetition and we see again in verse three, it says, God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you, that you would become a company of people, that he would give you the blessing of Abraham and your offspring, and that you would take possession of the land. And so again, we've got this people, this blessing, this place, this threefold uh, inheritance of this family. So it's absolutely amazing. 
And there's so much I could say about the birthright shenanigans. Um, but I think ultimately what we have to see in it all is that God will advance us. We do not have to advance ourselves. Jacob is then taken to a place where um, he's given a dream with this ladder. And there's just a such a power to um, the generosity of God over these people that God gives them exactly what he always intended to give them. And he's with them even in their imperfection. And he provides for them this image of a ladder up to heaven. And we know that in all of the symbolism of the Bible, one thing that we can see here is that Jesus is a ladder. Jesus is a way for us to connect with heaven, that he, um, that God's heart is always that we would step up from this earth and find ourselves in a new place. But Jesus is the route to that. He's the route to our elevation up. It's never us. We never elevate ourselves. He lifts us from earth to heaven and we have this promise in him that one day we'll receive as well which is eternity with God so those are a few thoughts on 27 and 28 let me know there was so much that I wasn't able to cover today so let me know what God was speaking to you and feed all of us in the comments as we fill in the gaps okay thanks guys